Forward TV. The world is thinking. There are three things that really drive the, the overriding principles of, of how the wire design works and how we articulate uh, what the wire design, what a, what a wired story is going to look like. And the first one is uh, details. And details imbue everything that we do. And so I'm going to take you guys through a, a, a typical cover process to give you an idea of the, the attention that we spend to every image that goes into the magazine. Obviously, the cover gets a lot more, more attention, but this is sort of par for the course. A couple of years ago, we did a, a story about um, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk uh, and Richard Branson and their drive to uh, commercialize spaceflight. So instead of, instead of spending $100 million with NASA to get a payload into orbit, you could do it on a, a factor of 10 less and, and spend $10 million with a company like SpaceX and Elon Musk. And there was this sort of uh, zeitgeist uh, uh, and a feeling that we were at a tipping point in terms of, uh, of this principle. So we decided to do a cover about it and quickly came up with the idea of doing, um, uh, based on this, this is a, a still from Terminator 3, uh, and this is where the machines are taking over and annihilating us all and all, all the nuclear weapons uh, launching from everywhere. But this image really struck, struck me, and I wanted to sort of take that and condense it into a cover and imagine a, a field, if you will, of blossoms of, of all of these um, rockets taking off. And of course, was a huge fan of uh, Battlestar Galactica and uh, the, the spacecraft there, and we were all, all totally keyed into that at the time. So we went out and we, we shot this just blank still in the desert and started to render in different uh, notions of, of rockets taking off and, and hired a few different illustrators to, to take, a, take a stab at it. We even went so far as to think about propulsion systems and, and if one is a, a sodium rocket, would the flame burn orange or more red? And uh, went a little bit nuts with it. But nothing was, was quite gelling. It didn't feel real enough for us and, and the kind of cinematic feel. So we hired a group called uh, Saddington and Baines in London. And uh, as most of you guys probably know, most car uh, and automotive advertising is not photography anymore. Uh, it's, it's almost all rendered, and, and these are renders and, that Saddington did. They've, they've done most of the European advertising lately, and now even uh, uh, TV commercials are that too, obviously. So it was really great fun for them to get to envision something and use their imagination, uh, a break out of uh, rendering uh, a Honda Civic. So these are, these are their first round of sketches for vehicles, and then started to put them in and, and start thinking about Gestalt and, and how we'd put them together. Just a bare wireframe there adding some color and texture, and then putting it into the scene. Uh, my special effects here, just for you guys today. Uh, speaking of getting bananas about propulsion systems, we went in and, and thought about theory and, and uh, methods and atmospheric conditions and ended up adding those in. And here's where we ended up with that. Color corrected it, balanced everything. Even some detail, we have a FedEx rocket in there, the Target rocket, and that's how the cover ended up. So that's just a, a little sampling of, of how we put together a wired cover, and, and that sort of thing happens on a monthly basis. Here's actually a, a story that happened a couple years later. This is a, a great case of life imitating art. Uh, these guys are these amateur rocketeers, and they build these giant 10 and 15 foot tall model rockets and go and launch them. It's actually almost the same spot where we shot that original image sort of funny. Uh, here's another cover exercise. This one brought to you by my fourth grade babysitter, Mr. Optimus Prime. And uh, so this was the first sketch. This was back two years ago when the Transformers movie was coming out. And uh, I begged uh, Chris Anderson, our editor-in-chief, that we, we had to put uh, Mr. Prime on the cover. So these were the first sketches. One of the great things about being in San Francisco, obviously, is that we get we have ILM down the street. So we went over there and started working with um, with those guys. That really amazing group of guys, and had a similar passion for uh, giant fighting robots, as it turned out. Uh, we wanted to treat it like a photo shoot, though, that that he was a, a living, breathing character for a lot of our readers, and and it would be interesting uh, to imagine him at a shoot. So we started off just as you know, like just a, a gray seamless, and and see what that would do. And we thought about having a a boy in there or something to give it a sense of scale. And without it, it was really feeling like a toy still. So 
I was actually on a bike ride down on the Embarcadero and saw this stretch down by ILM, and uh, it was sort of the perfect uh, scale. You know, but putting in a little, a little bit of overpass there and um, a, a light, um, it gave the sense of scale. So ILM went and actually rendered it into the scene. It was, it was pretty amazing, the amount of detail that is in this render. It's a, it was a gigabyte Photoshop file that we got. And you can see the scratches all the way down to, it's sort of insane. It's sort of a crime that this was just a cover because you, you never saw any of this detail. And then you figure that this is a two hour movie and they use the same model that they used for this in the movie. So every frame has that, that amount of data. They're just putting out terabytes of data every week when they're, when they're rendering a movie. Uh, from Optimus to uh, Ms. Martha Stewart, it's a good thing. Uh, we had this how-to franchise, and this was the second year that we did this, and we decided it would be, the year previously we had done Stephen Colbert, and we, we thought, who would uh, not be wired? What, what would be the wrong choice for uh, this? And of course it would be Martha. Martha was a huge fan of the magazine, and we thought it would be funny to put her in a, in a situation that she wouldn't normally find herself in, so we imagined her baking a wee cake. So this is uh, How to Bake a Wee Cake by Martha. So this was a, a concept sketch. Uh, uh, my very first boss was a, a fashion illustrator for, the, for newspapers. And I had her throw this together and we sold Martha on the idea of it. But her caveat was that she wanted a real cake and uh, her master cake maker had to make it. So uh, here's uh, Carolyn, uh, our photo editor at the shoot, and us uh, icing the real wee cake. And there we are very carefully setting it up there, and there's Miss Martha getting her icing on, <laughs> and that's how it ended up. And let me just tell you, it was real, and it was delicious. 